Okay, should we start? Yes. All right, good. So um, just raise your hand if you're a patient here in my practice. Just so some guests here, raise your hand. Okay, there's a few. Okay, all right, good. Um, so if you've been to any of my lectures, I like to start off with this opener. And if you've been to mine, you've heard this over and over. But I like this. So I'm going to start off with a story. Is that okay? Okay, so there's this professor, and he absolutely hated alcohol drinking. And he walks into his class, and he has two glasses, one glass with water, and another glass with alcohol. <laughs> and he also has two worms, right? So he grabs a glass with alcohol, so right here, or the glass with water, so this is one with water. Okay, he grabs the worm, he sticks the worm in this glass, and the worm swims around just fine, right? Then he grabs, grabs the other glass with alcohol, and he throws the worm in there, and the worm thrashes and ends up dying. And then he holds a glass up with the dead worm, and he says, class, what does this represent? And an eager student in the back said, well, if you drink alcohol, you're not going to get what? Worms. Worms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that there was two different viewpoints, right? There is the professor's viewpoint, and then there's the student's viewpoint. So I hope at the end of the workshop here, you can actually see my viewpoint on how it's actually possible uh, to get better. So uh, my name is Dr. Hugh Wegworth, and this is what I'm not. I'm not an allopathic, allopathic medical doctor, I'm not a gynecologist, I'm not a radiologist, I'm not a veterinarian. Okay, that's not my doctor. My doctor's in chiropractic. Now my postdoctor training is in this. Functional endocrinology, functional neurology, functional nutrition, and functional blood chemistry, and how your body all works together. Because at the end of the day, when you go to the doctor, how much time do you spend with the doctor? 15 minutes at the very tops. Okay, use your in and out in five minutes. So what I practice is what we call functional medicine. So what functional medicine is an individualized, tailored, custom program for your needs. God designed us with all different fingerprints. No human being has the same fingerprint. Right, so in order to figure out what's going on with your body and why your brain's not functioning right, you need a functional medicine approach, which is an individualized, custom, tailored program. So really what I'm trying to come up with here with this lecture is when you talk about brain issues, there's a lot of different things when it comes to brain issues. So really my purpose here is to show you what a, a functional medicine workup looks like, what can be going wrong with a person who has a brain problem, and there's a bunch of different brain problems, and then the kind of steps to move forward and actually get better. Okay, so one of the things is um, with the conventional model, I see the conventional model, that's more like a monotherapy. Like if you go in and you have high blood pressure, what's their solution for you? A drug, right? If you have high cholesterol, what's the solution for you? It's a drug, right? So what functional medicine is, is what we call a systems biology approach. So what you're really trying to do is it's a polytherapy. So if you have a brain disease, Alzheimer's disease, shaking, Parkinson's disease, what you really want to do is dive down and figure out where your body's not functioning right. And you don't just handle that approach with one approach. You handle it with a polytherapy approach. So there might be five, six, seven, eight, ten different things someone's doing to change their body chemistry to make their brain function better. So the thing here is the isolated nutrients or the isolated drug approach is not working. We need a systems biology approach, which is looking at you as a human being and figure out why you're not functioning, why your brain's not working right. Okay, I thought this was a really powerful statement. Everyone knows a cancer survivor, right? Everyone knows that. No one here knows an Alzheimer's survivor. Right, so this is a very powerful statement. Everyone knows a cancer survivor, but no one knows an Alzheimer's survivor. So this comes from the Alzheimer's Association. It says, currently there are what? Can anyone see that? No cure for Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so this is the Alzheimer's Association. <clears throat> now, their one focus is on finding a drug that's going to reverse and stop Alzheimer's disease. There's never going to be a drug that's going to stop and reverse Alzheimer's disease. It's physically impossible. It does not happen. So this association, which is focused on drugs, it says there is no cure for Alzheimer's disease. Now, people in the functional medicine world, this is a book. Has anyone read this book, The End of Alzheimer's Disease? Does anyone see this? Okay, you're going to want to write this down. You're going to want to read this book. Okay, this is on Amazon. It's Dale Brennison. He's an MD. He's an MD functional medicine doctor. So let me just let me go over that. So functional medicine is a subset of, of medicine. It has to do with getting to the, the, the cause of your body and figuring out what's going on with your body, working with the laws of Mother Nature, working with dietary changes and supplements. So for example, 
supplements are more powerful than drugs. Now, people, how can that be? Supplements are more powerful than drugs. When used appropriately for the right condition, in the right manner, for, for specifically the problem. Now, how can that be? For example, magnesium. Magnesium, and 60% of people are, are magnesium deficient. So magnesium works on over 400 enzymatic pathways in your body, 400. So when you take magnesium, the supplement, it's working at 400 different pathways in your body. If you take a cholesterol medication, it's working at how many pathways? One pathway, right? So what functional medicine is, is doing a comprehensive plan and figuring out why your body's not functioning. Now, he states in here, let me say this as clearly as I can. All Alzheimer's disease can be what? Prevented. Okay, now when you're working with a monotherapy with one drug, you're looking fine for the magic pill, one drug, one drug, that's not going to happen. You're not going to find a solution there. This man, Dr. Bredesen, is a functional medicine doctor, and he's treated hundreds and hundreds of people with Alzheimer's disease and reversed it. And in many cases, it's associated cognitive decline can be what? Reverse. Okay, so these are repeated over and over and over in functional medicine offices. So here's what we really need to do: is the goals of the workshop, or the goals of getting you better, restoring function, restoring brain function, which is possible, is we need to do two things. One, we need to stop what neuronal death, neurons from dying. Okay, and then the second thing we need to do is we need to improve neur neuron branching. Now here's what happens. This is, this is going to be a video. This is a neuron that's dead. Once your neurons are dead, they're dead forever. You can never replace neurons. Okay? Then secondly, this is a live neuron, and what we can do is we can extend the branches out, the finger-like uh, the, the finger -like prongs on this neuron. So let's look at this video. So again, this is a dead one. This is a live one. So what's happening with the live one? What's happening to the the fingers on the neuron. What's happening with that? You see how it's starting to grow? Okay, you see how it's, it's growing, right? So the goal of any brain degeneration is once these are dead, and if you feel that you have memory losses and brain losses, you have neurons that are dead. All right, that, that's degenerate. They're gone forever. But the ones that you still have alive, what you can do is you can, with a functional medicine approach, you can have these things start to grow. It's called neuroplasticity. Like plastic can be stretched. Okay, so it's called neuroplasticity, so you can stretch your nervous system. So what we want to do on a functional level basis here is we want to grow these little uh, prongs here, part of the nervous system. And you see how this is a dead neuron right here? Let's say another neuron was right here. It can grow and reconnect to this neuron because neurons need to connect to each other. Right? When one dies right here, for example, right here, this is someone that has... Um, Alzheimer's disease, this amyloid beta plaque. Okay, you see these little finger-like projections? They're stuck in this sponge thing like. So when that happens, if there's a neuron, like let's say there's a neuron right down here, these finger-like projections give nutrients to that neuron. Okay, so when these finger-like projections start to die, what happens to the communication and the nutrition to that next neuron? It starts to what? Decrease. It starts to decrease, it starts to die, right? So what we want to do is through functional medicine is these live ones here can come around, bypass the dead ones, and give the live ones nutrients what it needs. So the communication is very, very important. So then the goal is like how do you stop neuronal death, right? And how do you improve neuronal branching? And that's what we're going to be kind of diving here in the next uh, hour or so. And you can do both. Okay, this comes from uh, Dr. Bredesen's book. So the perfect Alzheimer's drug would have to do all these things. Is that possible? It's not possible at all. But guess what? Through functional medicine, what I do in my office, all these things are possible. This is why the drugs, there hasn't been a drug approved to treat Alzheimer's disease in 2003, over 15 years ago. Because they're all going after this thing right here. They're going after this plaque right there. That's what they're going after, this plaque right here. And the current research shows is that it is actually a protective mechanism. So I got some slides. There. Okay, so there's basically three common uh, degenerative diseases we're going to be touching on: dementia, which is brain, Parkinsonisms, where you start to move forward like this here and you get shaky, and then there's a cerebellar. So this right here is balance problems. So if you're experiencing balance problems walking, that would be your cerebellum, which is this right back here. Or if you like grab a cup and you bring it up to your mouth and you start to shake, that's your cerebellum up here. That tells you that the neurons in that area are starting to what? Die. 
okay? They're starting to die. So let's go over what this looks like. So you see this is a healthy brain, everyone can see that, okay? Now what starts to happen in neurodegeneration, which if you have symptoms, you have neurodegeneration, you can see how here, you see how there's a lot of spaces between the brain right here? You see that? Here's a normal brain, and you can see these spaces. This is the Alzheimer's brain. Now what I want you to pay attention to is these things hit different areas of your brain. Can you see on this brain right here, can you see how it's, these spaces are pretty tight in here? Okay, let me just erase that. You can see how the spaces are tight here, but what happens to the spaces when you get move over to the front of the brain? They start to what? Increase. To increase, right? So each part of the brain does certain things. So with paperwork that we have, we can figure out what part of your brain, just by filling out things, the paperwork here, what brain is being affected. You can see here, this side of the brain is bad. It's degenerating. Here's bad, but this frontal portion right here is not too bad. So this person is going to have different symptoms based on the area of your brain that's starting to neurodegenerate. Okay, so for here, this right here is your cerebellum. This is just like right back here. This is where the, this tissue is right here. You see how it's nice and thick here? You see that? You see what's happening up in here? It's starting to what? Neurodegenerate. It's starting to shrink. It's starting to degenerate. Now the symptom associated with this part of your brain would be your foot falling like in the dark. You don't know where you are in the dark. You have balance problems, clumsy hands. So this is associated with the cerebellum. Now what we want to try and do is, one, why is, this, uh, why is your brain starting to degenerate? Which it has to do with inflammation. If you have brain problems, you're inflamed. That's what the research shows. You are chronically inflamed. Bad memory, you're inflamed. So what we want to start to do is you can't, de you can't change this, right? Once this is degenerated, this is a permanent condition. But what, what we can do is we can start to branch these things in here and make the fingers on your neurons longer so that they can support this, and that's called neuroplasticity. Just like plastic, it stretches. Your nervous system can stretch, okay? So right here, this is your frontal lobe. So there's a whole bunch of questionnaires about that. Episodes of depression. Difficulty getting around melodies in your thoughts. Okay, frontal lobe, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, which is on the side. So by taking a survey, by filling out this, we can see what part of your brain is most affected. Then when I do exam, then I can see, you know, what's going on. So then you can retest to see if your brain is getting better. Okay? Um, your temporal lobe, hearing problems, difficulty localizing sounds is your, is your temporal lobe, which is more in here. So there's questionnaires that we can do to help find, too, like where your, where's your brain not functioning correctly? 